Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me and the entire Flurn team on Twitter any time of day at Flurn. Today we're going to be doing a really cool episode. We've got a great um, this is an image. It's a Halloween image by Roman. Uh, it's super scary. I'm going to show you guys some great things you can do in the background and in the foreground to kind of create exist like add colors that don't even exist there and also do some really cool retouching things to kind of like bring some special effects that you guys have might have done around the Halloween episode around the Halloween time to kind of bring everything together so let's go ahead and get into it uh, something really cool so this is our image by Roman and the first thing I want to do is uh, we're just going to zoom in and kind of see all of this really nice makeup that's got going on and uh, the nice lighting and just really really well done I like this image it's it's definitely scary but uh, it it works too. It's not like super, it's not too dark. It, it's just, it's just right on, I think. So one thing I want to do is kind of like see if I can blend in. Maybe we've got like some things wrapped around this person's head. So I'm going to see if I, we can blend that sort of thing in. Let's just zoom in a little bit more. And uh, I'm going to use the clone stamp to do this. So we can hit S for the clone stamp tool. And basically what we're going to do is I'm going to sample some from this side of our head and also some from that side of our head. And we're just going to paint over this sort of thing. So this will help out a lot when you're actually doing the photo shoot. Sometimes you don't need to get all these tiny little details perfect because you can just take care of them in Photoshop and it really doesn't take too long. So let's just start over here on the left. So S for the clone stamp tool and I'm going to hold Alt or Option to kind of sample an area and then paint right back over it. So I'm sampling up higher and now we're just going to paint down lower and we're going to see it's just going to blend in really well. Now for a smaller area just make your brush a little bit smaller. You can do that really quickly but just by holding control and option and clicking and dragging from the left to the right. If you're on the Mac, it's, or it's, if you're on a PC, it's going to be control, uh, control, alt and right click and drag. All right, there we go. And I'm just doing the same thing here, kind of sampling from down a little bit lower and then painting it in right there. Now you can go from above down lower just like I'm doing here or you can go from um, the skin lower and then kind of like paint it in upper. It's really nice because this is actually, it's relatively similar. We've got, you know, a, a light color here on the face with the face paint and then a light color up there as well. So the blending here really doesn't take too long and it, it's pretty seamless. Um, and then here in the darker areas, I'm just sampling the dark areas and then painting those back in. So it's actually really, really nice. All right, there we go. And we'll kind of come in from the top and get that too. So this is just one really quick thing you can do to kind of help everything bl blend in together and just make you know, just make that effect kind of like really come together and then it'll just kind of look like her head or whatever is just turning into this sort of thing. So you can see that didn't take, take too long. Just turn this off and on. Well, looks like I forgot to create a new layer. I've been on vacation for a couple of weeks if you hadn't noticed and uh, apparently I forgot how to create layers in the meantime. But I <laughs> just go to window and then down here to history. There we go. And we can actually see if I go back to the original and just click on there, we can see there's the original and then down to what we've done too. So that's another way of seeing before and after. Okay, now let's go ahead and create a new layer. The next thing I want to do is I want to add some contrast there in the eyes, like really make these pop. So I'm going to hit Shift Option Command N, which is going to create a new layer, and then Shift Option Command E, which makes the stamp visible layer. All right, we're going to put this layer from normal. I'm going to change this down to vivid light. So it's going to be pretty strong of an effect here. Uh, but next we're going to make it a little bit uh, better. We're going to make it look, make more sense and add that sharpening. So we're going to go to filter, other, and here down to high pass. So adding this high pass filter, let's just zoom in there. You can see given the different radius you choose here down really low, you don't see much of an effect. As I bring the radius up, you kind of see it has more and more effect. And then right around here, it just looks horrible. So just don't do that and you'll be good. Um, really here, there's no rule. There's no rule on what number is going to work for you. It's pretty much just whatever looks the best. Um, I try to push things like this as far as I can sometimes, especially with this where we really want it to look gritty. Like push it as far as it can before it starts to look bad. And here that looks like about three pixels. All right, let's just hit OK. And you can turn this off and on to kind of see the before and after there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Alt or Option and click on my layer mask button. That's just going to make a black layer mask and then I'm going to paint white on my layer mask. Layer masks just make layers either visible or invisible. So what I'm doing here is basically that effect, that super sharpening effect, I'm just having it visible over the eyes, maybe the, you know, the lips and the couple areas of the teeth and things like that. So I really don't need it to be visible everywhere. And what this does is it really helps to draw attention just to those areas. So let's just turn that off and on and we can see what that did there. 
pretty cool. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is, uh, I think we're gonna crop in a little bit. There's a lot of uh, empty space up here, which I don't mind, but it might just be a little bit too much. So I'm gonna hit C for the crop tool, and then just click here from the top left, and I'm gonna hold down the shift key to kind of constrain my proportions. And there we go, just zoom in a little bit more. We'll crop in, zoom in, something similar. There we go, and uh, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and give this um, color, like a little bit of color to the hair. Sometimes it's just a little bit nice. I know that you know there's definitely a point in making things dark, but there's some really nice detail here in the hair. I just don't really see it because it's too dark and it's really not that saturated. So I was thinking it might be nice actually to like bring this up in light lightness and bring some color into that as well. And then we can add some contrasting color here in the background. It's gonna kind of like bring the image together in a new way. So to do that, it's not really that hard. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab a curves adjustment layer. We're gonna click, you know, we want this area to be a little bit brighter. So with this, what we're going to do is it's going to affect the entire image, and then we'll just use a, um, the layer mask to define just this area. So I'm going to click here in the middle of this RGB, just bring this a little bit lighter. Let's go to our red channel, and I'm going to pull this up a little bit to add some more reds. In our blue channel, we're going to pull that down, and that's going to take away some of the blue, which kind of adds yellow. So it gives us that nice orange look there. Okay, now that's visible everywhere. If you don't want it to be visible everywhere, which for this in this case I really don't, um, all you have to do is hit Command I. That's going to invert the layer mask here, and then we're going to use our brush tool to paint white just where this hair is and other areas like that. And if it's not exactly perfect here, don't worry about it. You can always change your values here with your curve adjustment layer. Like here, it looks like maybe it's just a little bit too strong, like it's a little bit too much. Let's just paint it back visible, maybe like a 20% over these other areas to kind of like bring it back in other parts of this image as well. All right, and there we go. And again, you don't have to have it visible everywhere, but just a little bit of color. That kind of looks nice. It just kind of adds a little bit more. And if you wanted to have it, you know, like a little bit stronger in effect, you could go in here back to the RGB and kind of like bring that a little bit brighter, or you could, well, darker kind of defeats the purpose of what we were doing, but um, you could just make it a little bit brighter if you wanted to. And if you want to kind of like lower the effect, you could just change your opacity here as well. So uh, there are a lot of different ways you can do these sort of things. There we go. And that actually looks pretty good. So we're getting some color there, kind of like bringing it around. Now, I really like contrast between warm and cool colors. I think it works really well. You see it a lot in nature, like think of sunsets and things like that. You have a little warm right next to the cool. So I'm going to bring like a cool color here in the background. It's just going to kind of bring everything together. So to do that, what we're going to do is I'm going to grab an adjustment layer. We're going to go to curves again. All right, let's go back to our RGB. I'm going to click here on the bottom left and just kind of drag that up a little bit. It's going to raise my black points a little bit. Now we're going to do the same thing with our blue channel, and that's just going to give us some of those nice blues there. And it's, the blues are going to be the blues. <laughs> the blues are going to be coming out of the shadows here. Uh, let's go to the green channel, and I'm going to pull this right in the middle and just kind of bring that up. That's going to give us a little bit of that bluish green. Okay, now this I don't really want to be visible everywhere, but kind of like coming out from the background I think would be nice. What we're going to do is basically just use a layer mask here, just like we did before. So I'm going to click on my layer mask, hit Command I, and now we're going to use just a regular brush tool again, and I'm going to paint this back white, visible, behind our subject. And in this case, the background is relatively out of focus, and we're just adding like a blur of color here, so I'm not really that concerned with having like a super clean layer mask. It's okay if it's you know, if it goes right above the skin a little bit. In general, I, I want it to like not cover a ton of my, the skin on the subject. Like I don't want it to be visible there, but if it comes over a little bit, it's not really that bad of a thing. Um, that's kind of how color and light works anyway. It, they kind of bleed together anyway, so it's not the worst thing in the world. All right, that looks pretty good. It's a little too strong, so I'm gonna now paint with black at about a 10% flow, just to kind of like fade this back in from the edges. So it gives it a little bit more of a natural decay there. There we go. Pretty cool. So just that added like a little bit of blue, bluish green. Um, you know, nothing crazy there, but just kind of like gives a little bit more. So I'm going to take that same idea and we're going to push it a little bit farther. What I'd like to do is grab, go again to curves. We're going to do the same thing. Um, this time RGB will pull that up again just a little bit. And then I'm going to pull the red channel up actually. There we go. And then let's pull the blue channel back down. So this is similar to what we did with the hair. And let's just close that up. I'm gonna hit Command I there. And then we're just gonna bring this into like parts of the background, like where the, the blue kind of fades away. I'm gonna add some of this orange here. All 
All right. And all this is like, you know, it's totally aesthetic. It's just whatever you feel like would add or, you know, work for different images. If you don't feel like this works for the image, just, you know, don't worry about it. I'm just kind of like adding these couple different steps. Let's do one more thing. Now these layers that I added, let's just turn them off and on. Um, they add a lot of color. So if you want to make things darker or brighter, uh, just be sure you do that under these layers that actually affect the color. Uh, the reason is because these layers are, they affect the color, but not necessarily the brightness. And um, if you do want to affect the brightness, it's going to work a lot better if you do that underneath the color layers. So the color layers can stay a little more true. So what we're going to do uh, below all these three layers, just let's just shift click them and hit Command G to group those together. Let's just say I want to add like a vignette. So I'm going to go to my curves, click here in the middle, just drag that down a little bit. Let's add, hit Command I, and then I'm just going to paint white, you know, just right around here. Um, and that's just going to make that area a little bit darker. There we go, which is going to help draw attention to our subject. There we go. But you can see it's not affecting our color as much because we did it below our color layers. And let's do another curves adjustment layer, making that a little bit brighter. And then I'm going to paint this in here. There we go. Right over the eyes. So it's just kind of coming a little bit brighter right where our subject is. And uh, that's the whole point is like, you know, looking right, right there at our subject. Cool. That looks really good there. So let's go ahead and group those together. So you can see it really didn't take too long, everything that we did. And we have an image that's a little bit more dynamic than what we started with. And um, the color work in there, I think, works really well. So let's see the before and, uh, and the after. I'm kind of like looking at our subject's face a little bit more, especially because we sharpened around the eyes. And uh, just the color in general, I think, uh, I think adds to this image just a little bit. And if it's, if it's too much, like I'm looking at the blue, and maybe the blue is too much, um, it's OK. You can just turn this layer off and on. If you decide you want more green in there, just go to your green channel and pull that up and there, there's going to be more green or less green. You can do that too, more magenta. You can have a lot of fun with these things even after you've already created the layer. So don't feel like you're stuck um, with whatever you've done, uh, but it's just a really cool way to kind of get that going. And yeah, I think this looks really cool. So go ahead and do it yourself. If you have images that you feel like, you know, kind of could use some of this color, work with complementary colors like red and green, um, you know, the nice orange and blue. Work with those colors, add some in the background, add some in the foreground, and see what they do. You get a lot of really cool images like that. So that's it, guys. Thanks so much for watching Flurn. It's good to be back. I feel good, nice and rested, tranquilo. It's been nice. Thanks so much, guys, and I will see you soon. Bye, everyone. Hi, guys. Kat from Flurn here. For more information on our episode, please check out our website at www.flurn.com. Also, check out our latest photo shoots, which include turning a woman into a chocolate bar making an epic burger, and lighting a hand on fire. If you want a free tutorial, please sign up for our newsletter, because it's a free tutorial. It's awesome.